Hi and welcome back to a new watercolor video. Today I decided I will not paint on normal watercolor paper. I want to paint on some old book papers. I did this a while ago and I do this regularly and I found out that there are many papers that work really great. I'm sketching my flowers today with the Pentel brush pen. I believe it's called pocket brush pen and I got mine on Amazon and it's filled with a permanent waterproof ink. And as always, I'm sketching my flower super loose. I don't go for any details and it's not about making a perfect flower, it's about to create the impression of a flower and to bring in the feeling that you get when you look at flowers. I'm combining thicker and thinner lines. That's what I love about this brush pen. You can ve make very heavy lines and also really fine lines. Of course, you can use a reference photo for your flowers. This makes it easier, especially if you have just started with drawing or sketching flowers. Um, if you've already done this for a ton of times, then it will be easy for you to just sketch out a wildflower from your imagination. The first paper that I'm using here is a very, very thin paper. It's really flimsy and it's super smooth. Um, I, I think it could be similar to the Tomo River paper. This is the Bible paper many journalists love. I haven't had this in my hands in real life, but I assume this is something similar. Later you will see that this dark ink doesn't bleed through. I got a lot of questions about which watercolors to use when you are a beginner and which papers to use. Um, I will link up a video where I set up my watercolor palette. There I'm talking a little bit about paints and also what I recommend. And I just want to mention today, if you really are a beginner and you don't have any watercolors and you want to buy some, don't buy a no-name watercolor brand from Amazon. This is just not worth the money. If you paint with watercolors, you will here you can see that it doesn't play through. You will um, soon notice that there are differences. I would recommend a well-known brand and then take the Academy line from them. These are usually not that expensive but have a super high quality. Here I'm using, I believe this is the Mijello Mission Gold Quinacridone Red. It's one of my favorite colors. Mijello has some excellent colors and I really love them. What I also really like are the colors from Rosa Gallery. They are not in the range of the Mijello or of um, the Schminke, but they are really inexpensive and you will find them on Amazon if you are in Germany or, and I believe also if you are in Europe. My most favorite cheap brand of watercolors are the Van Gogh watercolors. They are really not expensive and have a super high quality and wonderful colors. So if you're a beginner, I would go for these. If you're in Europe, I don't know if these are available in the US. And if they are, I don't know if they are, if they are expensive or not. You see, I've colored the flower in super loose and quick. I'm using a small mop brush. I just want to share that the brush is not that important, especially when you just want to paint loose. I will use a different brush in the next round. And talking about paper, you can see finally it's not that important which paper you are working on. Of course, cotton paper is different and it's amazing and um, you have to try it. But if you want to do things like that or just to learn and practice, 
um, you don't have to use that expensive paper I would recommend getting yourself a watercolor paper uh, maybe from Canson I would not recommend the XL they have other cheaper versions of watercolor paper and then you're good to go the next paper that I'm using is much more heavier than the first one I've used and I also have the feeling that it soaks up a lot of more of the ink so it really dives into the paper and a quick note about brushes I don't have expensive brushes mine are all the cheapest I could get uh, my most favorite brush um, is the Da Vinci Casaneo. It's a gorgeous brush for everything. I just mind a bit that its tip is not super fine pointed. So if I want to paint some loose florals where I need a fine tip, then I just use another brush. But there are so many watercolor brushes um, from I would say student artist brands that are not very expensive and they do their job. I bought one super cheap set on Amazon and that's the only thing I noticed that this is not really great for watercolors because it doesn't hold much water. So um, I would recommend going to an art supply store and there search for watercolor brushes and then pick the ones you can afford and I always think it's not necessary to buy the most expensive ones. Here I'm using, I believe it's from Rosa Gallery, the Opera Rose. It's kind of a neon pink. If I compare it with the Opera Rose from Mijello, then it's not as bright. I also don't mind if I have um, light fast watercolors or not as I don't paint um, to frame it. Usually I don't frame it and if I do I just do it for myself um, and then it's not that important. Of course if you're an artist and if you want to sell your work then it's maybe more important to look for the light fastness of a paint. This paper also didn't bleed through, I just want to mention that. Um, here I'm just showing that it's different from the weight and you see the right one buckles, the left doesn't buckle at all. And it's just a different feeling, I prefer the thinner paper. My next paper is, I would say it's between the other two, it's also very rough like the one I used in the second round. And this is a very, very old paper. It's from a book from my grandparents. And it is a bit similar to the one I've used before. I would say it also soaks up much of the paint. Also, not the only the ink. Also, the watercolor paint dives deeper into the paper. Um, it just gives you different options. And I would say it's maybe a bit easier to paint on that one because on the first one, on the thin paper, a lot of the paint was a bit swimming on the paper. But I don't mind that, I really like that effect.
And as I always say, this is nothing where you need a lot of time for. I did these three paintings in around 15 minutes and this is what I believe everyone can um, take during the day and even if you only make one painting it takes you maybe five minutes and you have done something creative. As always you will find a link to my blog post in the video description and there I have posted all the close-up images of the paintings. This paper also didn't bleed through and I enjoyed painting on it. I think it works really good. To finish my paintings up I like to add spiders. For those of you that are watching my videos regularly, you know that I love this. I think it brings more vibrancy to a page and more liveliness. And you can vary, you can add the spiders when the paint is still dry or you can add the spiders while you are working and while some of the areas are still wet, then the spiders will bleed into the painting which makes it also interesting. I think this could be a really nice idea for a junk journal for example and I also believe it looks really nice if you frame such a painting. Or you can make a greeting card from it. I will do a video in the future where I'm using more of my old book papers and you just have to try the papers out. Some work great and some don't. Um, that's something you just have to explore. I hope you enjoyed today's video and I hope you like the paintings and I hope we will see us next time. Bye!